Moments ago, Chris Stobel returning to Tropical Storm status hours away from its anticipated turn to the United States northern Gulf Coast. We're live with the brand new models, the brand new data in our hurricane headquarters here on track in the tropics. Hey there, everybody. JB Buno here with you on the left side of your screen. Glad to be with us this Friday evening here on tracking the tropics. Tropical storm Cristobal back to a tropical storm being joined here by News Nation Chief, Meteorolo Chief Meteorologist Albert Ramon in the center of your screen. We'll be hearing from him momentarily, but we begin with tracking the tropics meteorologist Julie Phillips at the wall with the very latest on Cristobal again now a tropical storm. Julie. Thank you, JB. Yes, we do have tropical storm Cristobal. This was now has strengthened into a tropical storm again. It was briefly a depression, but at the 2 p.m. advisory that just came in, this is now a tropical storm again. Those max winds up to 40 miles per hour, which is why it is now a tropical storm. You can see on our satellite imagery, not very well organized, although the bulk of the activity on the eastern side of this system, it's still over the Yucatan right now. But as we head into this evening, this system is expected to move north into the Gulf, and that's when we can expect further strengthening to begin. As we take a look at the forecast track, you can see this was last updated at 11 o'clock, but by this evening, the system moves out into the Gulf, and by tomorrow morning, we're expecting it to continue to strengthen. So max winds at 50 miles per hour with this system, and it's taking that northerly trajectory through the Gulf. Kind of a southerly flow will continue to carry the storm north. And then by Sunday evening, that's still the forecast for landfall. Right now, and really the last couple of days, it's models have consistently shown this as a stronger tropical storm as it does make landfall. So not much of a change there. It looks like Sunday evening. And of course, now that we're getting closer to the actual event, that forecast cone is narrowing as we get a better idea of exactly where this will make landfall. And you can see it's expected to in Louisiana. And as we get closer and closer to the event, we'll be able to continue to fine tune that track for you. But as we head into next week, this storm will continue to move north and continue to bring some heavy rain rain along the Mississippi Valley. So uh, while this, I think the biggest effects from this system will likely be some of the heavy rain that we will see. In terms of how uh, sure or how accurate we think our models will be, you can see that most of our spaghetti models are in pretty good consensus of where this storm is headed. They have been for several days now. So we are pretty, um, we are pretty certain that it is going to head north and continue toward Louisiana as we head into Sunday evening. All of our spaghetti models then continuing to bring the storm off to the north. So depending on where you're viewing from will depend on the impacts at your home locally from this system. Here's a nice look at our tropical water vapor imagery. And this is important because the western side of the system, you can see all of this brown and orange. This is a lot of dry air that's feeding into the system, and that will prevent it from strengthening quicker than it might otherwise have. On the eastern side of the system, this is where the deeper moisture is. If you live in Florida, you've been seeing some heavy downpours, especially here in the Tampa Bay area, over the last couple of days. And you can see this moisture trail that's just extending from the Yucatan all the way into the Tampa Bay area and South Florida. And that's where we've already been seeing some heavy rain. And that forecast is going to continue over the next several days. So our satellite radar imagery showing you a lot of heavy rain out in the Gulf right now near Naples, tracking some torrential downpours extending into South Florida. And we'll see more rain here in the Tampa Bay area as we head through this evening. But even up into the panhandle of Florida, we're already tracking some moderate rain coming down this afternoon. So our rainfall forecast, we'll show you with the track. We're expecting to continue to see our rain, uh, really our rainfall totals add up all the way into the beginning of next week. This system is moving due north. So if you are in Florida, you remain on the eastern side of this storm where we do have the deepest moisture. And this is why we're expecting to see some heavy rain possible over the next several days. And you notice really kind of a bullseye just east of where this is expected to make landfall. Biloxi, southern Mississippi, we could see a widespread six to nine inches of rain as we just see repeat uh, repeated downpours passing over the same area as we head into the end of the weekend and into early next week. But even far east of this system in Florida, we are expecting to see some significant rainfall totals from this system that will continue to add up. That's why a flood watch was posted a few days ago, and that continues through Saturday 
afternoon. In terms of, I'm going to head back and show you, we do now have tropical storm watches in effect for portions of Louisiana and Mississippi along the coast here. Again, because that's where we could be seeing some tropical storm force winds. Also, we have storm surge watches that have been posted for Louisiana, portions of coastal Mississippi. We're expecting two to four feet of storm surge here, depending on when this landfall occurs with high tide. Also in the big bend of Florida, expecting probably one to three inches of storm surge there. So uh, again, not a major storm surge event, but some coastal flooding is possible. I think even if you're in the Tampa Bay area, we could have some higher than normal tides as we do head into this upcoming weekend, just because of this system moving off to the north. So right now, our future radar will show you a lot of the heavy rain right now over the central Gulf, but we're already have been seeing rain in Florida, and that's going to continue as we head into the weekend. By Saturday, this system is moving into the central Gulf. As it moves over the warm waters of the Gulf, it's going to continue to strengthen, but again, some of that drier air west of it will impede it from strengthening too quickly. So by Sunday afternoon, it will be approaching land, the northern Gulf Coast, likely somewhere near New Orleans in Louisiana. And we could already be seeing tropical storm force winds, that's winds over 39 miles per hour uh, in portions of Louisiana by Sunday at 8 a.m. Then this system will continue to bring the chance to see some tropical storm force uh, gusts even by Monday morning in northern Louisiana. Much of Florida not expected to see those tropical storm force winds are going to be closer to the center of this system. But if you are in places like Pensacola, Mobile, Alabama, you could definitely see some tropical storm force gusts as the system does make landfall and move ashore. So um, that's pretty much a, a summary of what we will be tracking in terms of Cristobal. Again, those tropical storm watches in effect and this system right now still over land. It has already strengthened into a tropical storm again, but once it moves back out over the warm Gulf waters, we're expecting this to strengthen even more. JB. Tracking the tropics, meteorologist Julie Phillips with the very latest in the two o'clock advisory from the National Hurricane Center. Time now to get Additional analysis here from News Nation Chief Meteorologist Albert Ramon. We had him on the program a couple of days ago. Chief Meteorologist of News Nation with WGN America covered Harvey, Rita, I, Claudette, and yeah, I think our tra Track in the Tropics super fans have anointed him in the comments section as the weatherman rock star, extremely popular in places like Austin, really all over the state of Texas. Glad to have you back here with us, Albert. Good to be with you, JB, and here we go with that 1 o'clock uh, Central Time, 2 o'clock Eastern Time advisory of this back to tropical storm strength. I think one interesting thing to note is they up the uh, the strength of it while the center of circulation is still over land, still over the northern Yucatan. But don't let that uh, make you think that this is going to explode into a big uh, tropical storm hurricane. We have a lot of barriers between where it is now and to the central Gulf Coast. That, that was going to be my very my, my very first question, because anytime we're talking about yeah. a named storm, people think of some of the named storms of the past, the ones that are worth our memories, the ones that are worth remembering, some of the worst that we've had on record in years past. But when we're talking about Cristobal, I was going to ask you about the relative strength of this particular system. Yeah, so it's early on in the season. It's early June. If we look at seawater temperatures in the Gulf of Mexico, between about 80 and 82 degrees, which is certainly warm enough for further strengthening and tropical development. That's why this is back up to tropical storm strength. But it's not like water temperatures we see August and September when they're in the upper 80s to near 90 degrees. There's a look at the satellite picture. There are a lot of barriers between where it is now and the central Gulf Coast. There is a tremendous amount of dry air, sinking air, out over the western Gulf of Mexico. So this is going to be a lopsided system. Even though the center of circulation may go uh, into central coastal areas of Louisiana, the worst the impacts will be off towards the east of the center of circulation. So places like Lake Charles, Sabine Pass, out towards Galveston, may not get a whole lot of action out of this, whereas places in southeastern Louisiana, uh, the New Orleans area, Mobile, coastal Mississippi may see the brunt of this system in terms of rainfall. When we're talking about places that this is going to hit, and there's the track right now, uh, according to the 2 o'clock advisor, the very latest in the National Hurricane Center, just animated on your screen, everybody. It's all, it all, Albert, it always seems like it's New Orleans. New Orleans always seems to be getting impacts from storms, and of course, being in a low-lying coastal area of southern Louisiana, this is a city that is sick of seeing hurricanes and tropical storms, but yet New Orleans here again right at the center of this track. Yeah, the good news is, though, those folks have done this hundreds of times, so they're, they're looking at this 
Uh, they know what to do. They know exactly what they're going to do for the rest of today and tomorrow while the weather's still good, uh, whether it's preparing boats, preparing their homes, taking down loose objects out in the yard, hanging baskets, lawn furniture. They know exactly what they're going to do. And, and Julie showed you those storm surge watches that are in place. Those are for mainly areas outside of the levee system. So uh, they're going to be able to handle this tropical storm no problem. The other thing to note, and we talked about even a couple of days ago, that the main concern with this tropical storm was going to be rainfall. The latest drought monitor that came out yesterday showing moderate to even severe drought conditions over portions of the central Gulf Coast. So part of this is welcome rainfall. If we can do without, you know, coastal erosion, the real strong wind gusts, 50 plus miles per hour, that's going to be great. Uh, but this is not a situation like we've seen in past years that the folks in New Orleans have had to deal with. Really, all of the Gulf Coast has had to deal with. So we'll continue to, to watch it closely. But uh, just stay informed, stay plugged in over the weekend. Don't panic about this one. Being rejoined here by Tracking the Tropics Meteorologist Julie Phillips here at WFLA, our hurricane headquarters here in Tampa, Florida. J.B. Buno here with you on the left side of your screen. In the center of your screen, News Nation Chief Meteorologist Albert Ramon joining us on Skype from Chicago. Glad that all of you could be here with us this Friday evening. We are now going to open up the Facebook Live and Twitter comment section. You see the hashtags underneath all of our names. Hashtag Hey JB, Hashtag Hey Albert, Hashtag Hey Julie. I would encourage you to use Hashtag Hey Albert and Hashtag Hey Julie. They are the meteorologists here on the program. They're the ones who know what they're talking about, everybody. I'm here just to ask the right questions and see if we can take some of the comments here from social media and ask them from Facebook Live and ask them from Twitter. So if you would like to ask a question to one of our meteorologists here, Albert, or Julie, use the hashtags on your screen, hashtag hey Albert and hashtag hey Julie. Getting you guys back here, everybody. Albert, Julie, when we're talking about how this has now poured so much rain, so much torrential rain, precipitation over southern Mexico, we're now going to see this depart. When exactly are we going to see this start to make some movement here? Because I feel like we've been seeing it here in southern Mexico for, for quite some time, several days now already moving north now as of that last advisory that came in at two o'clock you can see it's moving north at 12 miles per hour so within a couple of hours we're expecting the center of the storm to be out over the gulf um, but unfortunately like you said really some torrential rainfall totals in portions of mexico el salvador guatemala we're talking 30 plus inches and they could even see a little bit more before the system moves out we're not going to be seeing as large of totals as that, but you know, some areas, especially just east of where this makes landfall, could see isolated spots could see over 10 inches of rain. Albert? Yeah, that forward speed, that's the important part of all of this. Uh, last night, it finally started to make that turn at about 11 o'clock Eastern. It was moving east, and now this morning, north, and it's not slow. 12 mile per hour forward speed is actually pretty decent for a tropical system. And that is going to be the difference between big time flooding rainfalls uh, in the central Gulf Coast and some heavy rainfall that's going to cause some, you know, maybe minor to moderate uh, flash flooding. And the good news is the latest data coming in this afternoon doesn't have this slowing down as it moves towards the United States coast. It looks like it's going to continue to track up towards the north Sunday night into Monday along the Mississippi uh, River Valley. And big, big rainmakers, Julie was mentioning uh, half a foot of rainfall, easy on average, but there'll be some isolated totals, 10 plus inches of rainfall, especially to the east of the center of circulation. Albert Ramon, J.B. Buno, Julie Phillips here with you live, everybody on Tracking in the Tropics. Uh, we got some local questions coming in here from Facebook Live, a lot of them focused on the state of Florida. We have a lot of, of course, Floridians watching here on Tracking in the Tropics. Dustin Ward, hashtag hey Julie, asking about Pasco County. Alex Sedano, uh, hashtag hey Julie, asking about the Tampa Bay area. And then just coming in uh, a short time ago, Mary Pree, hashtag hey Julie, what does this mean for Sarasota? So to our Tampa Bay, our Gulf Coast Florida viewers here that are joining us on Track in the Tropics. Julie, what do we say to the impacts that we're going to be feeling here in our section of the state? Absolutely, JB. Well, if you are watching from the Tampa Bay area, you're going to continue to see some of the impacts that we've already been seeing. Yesterday, we had quite a bit of rain around, the same with Wednesday, and that is going to be the case this weekend. Is it going to be a complete washout? Probably not, but you can expect multiple rounds of rain. We could have some morning rain, some afternoon, an evening storm. Typically, this time of the year, we have the sea breeze collision, we see rain, but it's usually just one round. It's just going to be kind of gloomy like we've been seeing, so extra cloud 
cover, not much sunshine, and those scattered downpours, and just a little bit more numerous in nature than we'd otherwise be seeing from our, uh, our normal sea breeze collision. So expect that to occur all the way into the beginning of next week. So we'll see additional rainfall totals maybe of two to five inches of rain in some of those spots. Of course, it depends on exactly where you're at, where some of those uh, strongest cells set up, but mainly just rain for us here. We're not going to be feeling tropical storm force winds. And again, this weekend, maybe some higher than normal tides right along the coast, but flooding really shouldn't be much of an issue in terms of any storm surge. That'll be more in the northern Gulf Coast or the, the big bend of Florida. Carol here commenting in the Facebook Live comment section saying that several areas along the Gulf Coast could use the rain, echoing exactly what Albert was talking about a brief moment ago. And then uh, Char, Char, Char and Alan McCrary, hashtag hey Albert, hashtag hey Julie, want to know particularly about how spaghetti models are created. Julie, I don't know if we have the spaghetti models here yeah. in this rotating set of graphics, but if we could go back to them here, maybe take a little bit of a closer look here. Uh, Albert, Julie, what are you seeing here as far as some, I mean, most of them appear to be in consensus, a couple of outliers, but this is pretty normal for what we see from the spaghetti models. Albert, yeah, so each one of those lines represents a, a different model, right, where the center of circulation would be. And as meteorologists, we like to have as much information as possible. We're, so we're looking as much uh, data as possible. And whenever we show you those spaghetti plots here uh, on the digital side or on TV, it's just kind of show you the behind the scenes of the weather forecasting process. And some of those lines, some of those models are just better than others. Uh, so the ones that we're showing you are what we call consensus models. And whenever they start to bunch up, like you see right there, that means that multiple different runs of these models are starting to jive with each other. So we do like to see that in the forecast process. Now, notice there are three lines that are much more off towards the west. Some even taken into the panhandle of Florida. Those are outliers. And even the, the global models, both the American and the European model, are both pretty much on track on both now timing, intensity, and location of landfall. Again, Albert Ramon joining us from News Nation, everybody. WG in America in Chicago, Skyping in for us here on Track in the Tropics. Priscilla asks a really good question here that I kind of want to just take and then encourage a little bit more discussion about this afterwards because Priscilla is asking, what date will this storm be doing its worst damage? And I'm actually more curious to echo what Priscilla is talking about here. I'm curious as a, as a viewer, if I'm, if I'm watching at home, what date or what time of the day this is going to be at its strongest? When we look back at Cristobal in you know, weeks from now, when are we going to say that this storm was at its mightiest? Is it going to be right before it potentially makes landfall along the northern Gulf Coast? You're right, JB. It probably will be right before it does make landfall. That's when the winds will be their strongest, right before it makes landfall somewhere near Louisiana. So that's going to be Sunday evening it looks like so sunday evening into sunday night probably um is when we're going to feel the strongest of the effects from this system right now the forecast is for it to be a strong tropical storm so that was when we will have the strongest tropical storm force gusts will be right along the coast there also any storm surge would likely occur um, out ahead of it making landfall and then some of those very very high rainfall totals just east of this system so probably we're talking about the second half of the day sunday into Monday morning as the system begins to move north, conditions begin to improve some. What do you think, Albert? Yeah, one other thing I think folks need to be alert on is as early as Saturday evening, tomorrow evening to tomorrow night, the outer rain bands are gonna start to approach the uh, central Gulf Coast. And sometimes you'll get quick spin up tropical tornadoes. Tropical tornadoes, short lived for the most part, fairly weak kind of hard to get on Doppler radar because they are so quick, but that's something you want to be uh, paying attention to, especially if you live right along the coast. And just because, uh, you know, we talk about landfall, landfall so much, you may not have the worst of the weather right where the center of circulation is. Now, you certainly could have the highest wind gusts there, but as we've been saying for days now, this looks to be more of a rain event than anything, and some of the heaviest rainfall is probably going to be displaced from the center of circulation, again, east of uh, wherever it makes landfall. So New Orleans, Mobile, even Pensacola, let's watch for some of these heavier, intense rain bands that come on in right off the Gulf, almost like a fire hose, and tracking over the same location for hours and hours. That's where you can see those six-plus inches of rainfall add up in a short period of time. Last couple of questions here that we're getting in from our Facebook Live comment section here. Stephanie, a WFLA Top Facebook fan, asking, hashtag HeyJB, is it going to be heading towards 
Southern South Carolina. Now, while I know that we don't even have really South Carolina on any of our graphics because we're so honed in here on the northern Gulf Coast, but uh, Julie Albert, where could this go after maybe it makes landfall when the remnants of Tropical Storm Cristobal scatter? Where, what states are we talking about as impact? I know that we've been talking a little bit about Arkansas seeing some impact. Absolutely. You can see there on the track that it's going to kind of move up along the Mississippi River Valley. So we could see potentially some flooding in that area as well due to some of the heavier rain. But that's going to be more of the uh, central southeast. So as you head north of Louisiana into Arkansas and then continuing on its way north, South Carolina, you're still on the eastern side generally of this system. I don't think you're going to see the worst effects, but your weather may be a little bit unsettled as we head head toward the weekend um, for sure, just like we're already seeing in Florida. We have been for a few days now, some of the heavy rain just from the deep moisture it's bringing north. And as you would expect, Albert Ramon, of course, getting a lot of comments from hello, saying hello from Texas. We got Beth Garcia saying, hey, Albert, Hank Custin uh, so actually was asking about Tampa. And we, Hank, we, uh, we answered that question about Tampa a short time ago. Leanne Guerrero also saying, hi, Albert. Kat Sawyer saying, hi, Albert. And uh, Jan Pickens, lastly, also saying hello to Albert Ramon. And now the new awesome. chief meteorologist <laughs> at News Nation for WGN America. Uh, what, one more time, that launch date, Albert. September 1st on the WGN America network on uh, cable and satellite. We're going to be tracking a three-hour national news program, a lot of weather included as well. It's going to be 8 to 11 o'clock Eastern starting September 1st, seven days a week. So we're excited about it. I'm going to throw you guys on the spot here for one last question. I know that we get caught up so many – we talk about this all the time, that we get so caught up in – uh, cat one, cat two, tropical storm, tropical depression, the certain tier that a certain storm falls under, but uh, chances that this becomes a cat one. Thoughts? We'll start with you, Julie. Uh, right now, I think uh, the good thing is that the last couple of days, the forecast models have been um, pretty consistent with this being a strong tropical storm upon landfall. Now, that's not to say that it's completely out of the question that we could see a Cat 1. I mean, the difference in wind speed would only be about 10 miles per hour. So right. while that is certainly possible. Um, right now, the forecasts have been pretty consistent. So I'd say, you know, there is a slight chance it could be uh, a low cat one. But right now, it doesn't look like we really have all of the pieces for this to become really one of those strong storms, as we typically don't see, you know, this early in the season. Some of that dry air on the western side of the system may continue to keep it from strengthening too quickly. Albert? Um, I learned a long time ago to say uh, never say never when it comes to tropical weather. That being said, the ingredients at this point don't look to be there that this is going to become uh, a hurricane. There's a tremendous amount of dry sinking air over the western Gulf of Mexico, northern Gulf of Mexico wind shear. Those are upper level winds, 20 to 25,000 feet that will shear the tops of some of these clouds that will inhibit, you know, uh, rapid intensification. Something to watch for sure. And again, water temperatures. 80 to 82 degrees. I don't think we're quite there yet to see a huge explosion like we may see down the road later this summer. Again, week one of hurricane season producing our <laughs> third named storm of the Atlantic hurricane season. Tracking the tropics meteorologist Julie Phillips on the right side of your screen. News Nation chief meteorologist Albert Ramon joining us here from Skype from Chicago. In the center of your screen, I'm JB Buno. We will continue tracking Tropical Storm Cristobal in the hours and days ahead. Stay right here on the app, website, or social media platform that you're currently watching on and look for further updates, further live streams coming up here soon on Tracking the Tropics. For Julie Albert, I'm JB. Thanks for being with us. We'll see you soon as we continue to track Tropical Storm Cristobal. Thank you for watching Tracking the Tropics.